All right, welcome back for another episode of Hidden Gems. This is the video series where I talk about those little hidden treasures that are tucked away in boxes, possibly at your LCS, maybe even at shows. These are not necessarily wall books, nor are they dollar bin books. These are things that could be priced in those back issue bins that you might be able to dig out for cheap, undervalued kind of stuff. Just things people aren't really looking at or talking about these days. Uh, just fun little hidden nuggets that could be buried in those boxes that you might be able to liberate for your own collection. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this content as well as everything else here on the channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Please like, subscribe, hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends that we can keep growing the channel. Uh, keep an eye out for I just posted a notice about a giveaway that we are doing this week. So if you want details, check the channel for more info on that as we got a pretty cool book to give away. Uh, an original art piece done by one of our viewers. I'm sure you've seen it already. I've been sharing it on IG and I actually have it right here. So you know what? I'll show it off one more time if you want this one in a one of a kind original sketch cover done by our buddy astro wizard this could be yours just check the channel for info on how you can enter the giveaway uh not all said if you want to see what books i'm going to be talking about this week and i have a slightly different tweaked format here where i'm going to be giving you categories uh just to kind of keep things organized for me when i uh put these shows together and hopefully you enjoy that little bit of a change and if you want to see the books just hang on for a few seconds after the intro i will be right back All right, so as I kind of tease there in the open, I did slightly tweak how we're going to be presenting these books going forward. I was just doing just a whole list of books, but you know what? I decided I'm going to come up with categories, kind of like how I was doing my uh, dollar, my cheap digging finds uh, video series, where I gave you like little title cards for different categories of different types of books. Uh, so this way I can kind of organize. I was going to do all artists this week, and then I thought, you know what? I don't want to do just a singular topic or theme. I think people appreciate me mixing things up because this way I get to talk about for all different levels of collectors. I can give some stuff for the newer collectors who might not be aware of some very easy books that should be you know, mindful of when they're digging in the boxes, as well as some deeper cuts for you uh, more veteran uh, diggers out there. Just weird oddball things that you might find interesting. So with that, I'm going to repurpose a video series that I haven't done in a while and just uh, do like an abbreviated version of it here. And uh, that's going to be our first little segment. And it's going to be a little quick artist retrospective. Uh, as I said, I was going to do a whole bunch of uh, early works by some of these artists and books that are just awesome covers that were tucked away. But I decided, you know what? I don't want to do a whole show just on the artist. So I'm just going to give you one this week. And the first one we are going to start off with is one that has gained popularity over these last few months with her uh, incentive covers, most particularly this Catwoman. Um, this Catwoman incentive, this one in 25, really just shook the uh, collecting world by, you know, by storm or took it by storm, I should say. And uh, it really made her more of like a household name. So this is done by Sozo Mika. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Or Mika Sozo. There's this whole thing with her name and it's being reversed. But if you're looking up covers, you need to look up both ways. If you want to be able to track down all of the comics that she's worked on, which has not been a lot. She's not had a lot of comic work or cover work. Uh, she's done a lot of graphic art design and things like that. Self-taught and uh, a lot of cool stuff. But more and more covers are coming out these days that are just really getting the attention of uh, collectors. So I felt like now's a good time to talk about some of uh, the books that she's done. As I said, that Catwoman book, I mean, everybody knows that book. That's the one that kind of put her on the map. Uh, recently, I, I've talked about the uh, Kickstarter for um, Ji Hyung Lee's um, Guma. And she's got a variant cover there as well, which is also pretty gorgeous. Uh, again, my buddy Chris Nelms is part of that Kickstarter project. So that's why I'm trying to show support. He's my friend. We've done a lot of shows together. And uh, apart from the fact that I think the comic's pretty awesome. So go take a look at the Kickstarter if you haven't already. Because one of the covers available is a Sozo. So that is pretty cool. And what also makes this even more topical is this week, coming out this Wednesday, there's another Catwoman incentive. Or is it a Harley uh, incentive? But this awesome cover right here. Actually, I think it's a Harley. Uh, no, it's Catwoman 43. Sorry, I'm getting back and forth, twisted, turned around. Catwoman 43, this 1 in 25 incentive, has the two of them on there, which is why I got confused for half a second there. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I, I like the Polaroid look. It's a pretty cool cover. Uh, keep an eye on it. You know, if you see it in your shop, maybe think about getting it. I don't know. I like it. I ordered some ahead of time because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get to a shop to uh, get it because 
those kind of things clear out quickly in my area. Well, I only find really the weird and obscure incentives. Hot, hot type books like this, I usually can't get a hold of because I, I just, I don't have a regular pull list and I'm kind of lazy. I don't always, not lazy, I'm kind of busy, I should say. Not lazy, busy, because I don't have time to go to the shop on Wednesday mornings or first thing when they open because I got to work and I got other things to do, like putting shows together for the channel. That said, all of that said, so now that you've got a sense of uh, who Sozo Micah is and some of the covers that she's done and more recent works that are upcoming, let's look back at uh, what I believe is her first comic work, actually, that is uh, still pretty affordable. And this is the, you know, Black AF Devil's Die from Black Mask, Chapter 1. Different st different look from her. It's not as a uh, computer, uh, I guess, uh, color generated, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is more like ink and pen kind of vibe to it. So I kind of dig it. Plus I really like the blue here. Uh, I like this cover. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. This one does all right, but she did the whole series and it's only uh, four issues. So then there's issue two, three, and four, all really cool covers. You can see a little signature tucked away there in the uh, corner of the eye. Uh, but definitely, definitely cool stuff. So things you can keep an eye out for, because this could be buried in like an indie box somewhere, leftover indie stuff uh, somewhere in your shops. Because I know Black Mask is one of those publishers where they get hot and then people forget about it. And then a hot book comes out and then people forget about it again. It's just one of those things. So I think uh, while Black was a very popular title for the original series, I don't know if this follow-up series really had the same uh, push that, that that one had. So these books could be just buried away in a shop somewhere. So keep an eye out for them. Uh, that said, this, what does this do? The issue one in particular, like I said, it does better than the, the whole set. You can see it's uh, about 13 to 20 bucks you can get for just that first issue with some of these recent sales, May 7th and 8th. So pretty recent stuff just within the last week or so. Uh, but if you look at what's available, yes, it's like 20 bucks for the first issue, but the other issues could be super cheap. Look, issue three is only two bucks out there, uh, or you can get a whole set for 25. So you can pay 20 for just issue one or pay 25 and get all four. I'm of the mindset of always get more for your money. So I would be more interested personally in getting the four for 25 than just, you know, the one for 20. But that's, again, my decision. That's the kind of thing that I usually do. But you make the call. If you find them at your shop, maybe you find them cheaper. They could be undercover. They could be less than cover. I mean, even at a dollar box for all I know. But these are her first works that you might just want to go and check out. And I think this is only back in 2019. So these aren't really old, old books. These could even be in like a recent back stock, overstock kind of a area. Now, uh, another interesting indie publisher sort of title that uh, features a uh, cover for uh, her is another one you should keep an eye out for is this Kill Switch. Again, doesn't look like her current style, which is a little bit more polished than these early works, but that's you know the case for a lot of artists. You look at a lot of the original uh, art by uh, McFarlane, even Jim Lee, like it wasn't as polished as it eventually came, you know, became. So uh, this is still just kind of fun stuff to go and look for. And this is an Action Lab book. Action Lab Danger Zone, the first issue of this Kill Switch uh, has this Sozo Micah, Micah uh, cover. Again, I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Uh, apologies if I am butchering it, but yeah, I do what I can. Uh, but you can see how cheap this thing is, even online. $1.22, three bucks. Uh, in April and March. These are kind of old sales. This is, this is something that's not really selling or moving. Uh, it's, again, something you can find, probably find for cheap if you just want to go and collect her covers because she doesn't have that many for you to go out and, uh, you know, put into a collection if you want to go collect all her stuff granted the incentives could get expensive but if you want the cheaper stuff these are some things that you can go and look for and like i said even online for uh three five bucks three to five bucks here uh, available copies not expensive at all uh if you are interested in collecting more sozo mica so that is the artist that i gave you for this week i'm gonna try I had, like i said i had a whole pile of artists to do so i might be giving you an artist each week with this uh little part of the segment but i do have more some cards for you some different categories so we're gonna shift gears from uh that to go over to later prints now here, I'm going to feature, on what you might guess, later printings. Could be second print, third print, fourth print, fifth print, whatever it might be. Just those later printing books that uh, you might just be able to find out there for cheap. Uh, things you just might not even be aware of actually exist. Like this one, I've completely forgot that there was actually a second second print of this book. And it actually does pretty well. Uh, and that is Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider number one from 1990. How do you tell the difference? It's not easy. Uh, look at the barcode down below. You see the little Ghost Rider skull in there? That's the second print. Whereas the first print has this, either the Spidey logo or you might get a newsstand, uh, you know, the barcode down there. Uh, but 
the second print's going to have a little Ghost Rider skull. Otherwise, you got to open the book and look at the Indicia, Indica, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But you got to look inside to figure that out. But otherwise, this is the easiest way to identify the second print on the cover is to look for the little Ghost Rider head down in the, uh, in the barcode area. And like I said, this one does pretty well for itself. Considering Ghost Rider 1, you know, it's a book that people like to collect. First Danny Catch, but they printed a lot. They printed a lot of that first print, so it's not super expensive. It's still probably 15 to 20 bucks in most places, but the second print can get you a little bit more in that kind of 25 bucks. Uh, look, 43, uh, $43 for the pair, first and second print, uh, with 15 bids back at the end of April, and then uh, 120 bucks, uh, best offer on uh, that 9.4. It's not even a 9, it's a 9.4 that got 120 bucks, or a best offer on 120 bucks, which actually accepted 100. And if you want to look at what's available, you can see the asking prices on that second print right now are more in that forty to sixty dollar range. So while some of those sales might be a little bit cheaper, forty to sixty bucks right now if you want to go buy one online. So go check your shops if you're interested. Uh, you got a better shot there than probably uh, shelling out the bucks here on the uh, eBay's because nine point six three hundred dollars is also a pretty steep price for this second print. But it's something to keep in mind, something to be watchful for when you're digging in those boxes. Yes, it could be listed for 15, 20 bucks at your shop. But when you look at these prices online, maybe it's worth it for you to pick it up at that price. You make that call for yourself. I'm just giving you the info, telling you about the book, and you decide what you want to do with it. That said, sticking with the year 1990 and these uh, big first issues of the time, let's look at the second print for Spider-Man as well. Because... Yes, I know everybody knows McFarlane. Everybody knows this cover. I mean, how many homages have we seen to this cover over the years? It's getting pretty ludicrous how many different times we've seen this cover. But this is the second print. The gold is the second print for this cover, which is one that is kind of fun to go in and go and look for. Yes, the first print has that silver, or you have like the kind of green background, and then you got different versions that have come out all over the years. But uh, the gold second print is one, uh, it's like I said, just keep, a, keep an eye out for it because it can still do all right for itself. Two. I mean, 30 bucks, best offer on 35, got 25 bucks. So 25, 30 bucks for second print of a book that was, again, Spider-Man number one was printed very, very heavily. I mean, what was it, a million, at least a million copies? Um, put that into context. These days, the top selling books of the month maybe crack 100,000. So there are a million of these things. So second print might be a little bit less. So keep an eye out for the gold. If you're into that kind of thing, you like collecting second prints. I'm not saying it should be more valuable. It's not really a, a you know, first appearance really that you really need to pay attention to or anything like that. It's just kind of a fun little book to go and go and hunt down because if you want to buy one online, it's going to cost you close to 40 bucks. So don't pay 40 bucks for this thing, but go look in your shops. Maybe you can find it for cheaper there. Uh, like I said, you can see the prices. Again, make that call. It's up to you to do what you want to do with this information. But that said. I've been talking a lot about Sonic lately because, again, my son yap, yap, yap into my ear with all these Sonic characters. I'm going to try to leave off of Sonic just for a little bit, but we are going to be doing a little bit of video games. So some video game properties that I think are kind of interesting that might uh, that kind of roll off of that idea. So I'm pretty much going to stick with Capcom for right now. So Sonic with the Capcom comics, the Capcom made the video games, uh, but they also have other titles that I think you should be paying attention to if you find them in a box. Think about it. Uh, so for my video game section, we're going to start off with Darkstalkers. It's kind of like their Capcom's version. Well, I mean, not Capcom's version of Street Fighter. I mean, they have Street Fighter. This is more like the horror themed uh, creatures, monsters, that kind of thing. But they also make comics and uh, these Udon books do pretty well. Uh, pretty awesome covers. And uh, you might be if you can find them for cheap, find them in a box, even like the Street Fighter books as well. There's usually pretty, a lot of variants or a couple of variants. Just it's hard to try keep track of everything, but just remember some of these covers. And if you see them, consider it. This is easy. This Darkstalkers Night Warrior series, there's uh, three issues, there's two covers. So that's it. There, and all of them are priced about the same. So uh, we'll just do the first cover A's just to give you a sense of what we're talking about here. So this is Darkstalkers and the Night Warriors number one in, in the middle. And then you can add in the connecting covers for issue two on the on the you know, over on the right, and then three on the left, which is different. It's odd. Usually when they do connecting covers, it's usually in order. This, they kind of bookended around it, which is kind of different, but still pretty cool. So a nice connecting cover set, if you can find them uh, for this one. Sold copies on this. This thing could sell for as cheap as like nine bucks, or you can get 20 bucks for the set, maybe 40 bucks for the set with the, some, some of the variants in there as well. So 
it's not a super duper expensive book, but I kind of like it. I kind of dig it. And uh, there was even recent books as well. I think there was a Morgan Morgana. I don't remember her name. Uh, the character in the middle with the little bat wings on her head. Uh, she just had a mini series come out recently uh, from uh, from the Udon Publishing. But that said, available copies on this. You can see twenty bucks, fifteen bucks for random issues, or you can get the whole set for forty. That's kind of what you're looking at. But maybe you can find them cheap. Maybe you find them in a dollar box or less than a dollar. Not less than a dollar. Well, I mean, maybe less than a dollar. But you know what I'm saying. Undercover, maybe buried in a back issue bin somewhere. Because this is the oddball little title, kind of indie kind of thing that maybe you can find just in a forgotten box, hidden away at a shop. I'm not saying you're definitely going to. I'm just saying it's possible. So these are the kind of things that I keep an eye out for. And I'm just suggesting that you do as well. That connecting cover were the A covers. Each also had a B cover as well, which are pretty good. You can see there's one, two, and three. They all have this kind of background filigree, so they have a similar kind of vibe to them, but these do not connect. There is, the only theme there is uh, kind of like the background, and they kind of feature a female character on the cover of each of these uh, B covers. But these do about the same, maybe even a little bit better, uh, where you can see $40, you can get the whole set with some of these B covers in there, or issue two is the only sale I could find at 27 bucks with the uh, UK shipping at over $18. So that's a pretty steep ask, or not steep ask, steep price somebody paid for uh, just that one issue, potentially. And if you go online to look for what these cost, look, an issue one is an example, over 20 bucks just for issue one, or 80 bucks for the B cover set. So again, these things are interesting to me, at least. So if you can find them out there, you know, go and consider it if the price is right. Like I said, not recommending anybody pay any of these prices, any of these market prices. I'm trying to show you what the market is. So in case you can find it for less, you can make that call of what you want to do. Now, like I said, we're going to stick with Capcom and we're going to go shift over to Mega Man real fast uh, just for a couple of books. I, I'm a big fan of Mega Man. Uh, it was one of my favorite games growing up. But the last issue of his series, issue 55 of the Archie run, I should say, because there is a, I think a, there is a couple of newer series that followed this. There was a Dreamwave series as well that had a pretty cool uh, Scotty Young cover that we'll get into another another week. Uh, there is also the, the Master Mix, which I might even get to tomorrow for Chasing Ghosts. Those are pretty cool. But anyway, the Archie versions, so the Archie books when Archie had the uh, Capcom licenses, uh, issue 55 was the last one, and there was a, a variant for this as well. Uh, the rock variant, rock man variant. So you can see here with the whole guitar, little band kind of set up. Both of these last issues, I've talked about them before. Always pay attention to last issues. They can, could command a premium, and this one does. Granted, I can only find recent sales of the variant cover in the thirty-four dollars to forty dollar range. That's just for the rock man cover. But asking prices, however, are a little bit more in the fifty to sixty dollar range for the regular, and fifty bucks also for the rock man. So. 50 to 60 bucks for this final issue is what you're looking at, which is not a bad return if you can find it for cheap. Again, I don't know. This could be buried in the kids section at a lot of shops. It's an Archie book after all. So Mega Man may not be in the regular regular back issues. You might have to go ask. Go find that weird little area. Where do you keep all of the kids' books? Where are the Archie books? Maybe it's buried away over in there with Animaniacs and other cool, fun stuff uh, that shouldn't be overlooked. But that's what we're talking about for issue 55, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about Sonic, but I kind of am because a few issues before this, there was a big crossover. The worlds unite, worlds uh, combine. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but anyway, crossover with the Capcom uh, characters of Mega Man and Sonic. 12 issue run. Really cool. Started with Sonic Universe number one. Worlds unite. There it is. Worlds unite. It's at the top. So Sonic Universe. Uh, I think this is issue 76 is uh, the first part of this 12 uh, issue epic story and these things do all right there are multiple covers for a lot of these as well i'm not going to show you all of them because uh, we'll be here all day if i go in that deep with all the variant covers because there were a lot uh but keep an eye on this stuff because these things do all right you can see the c cover which is a connecting cover which we will get to in a minute 55 bucks for that one alone and then this regular uh this regular cover here that I'm showing you, yeah, 25 bucks. And then there's, I guess, a B cover as well for this Sonic Universe 76. Four bids got it up to almost $60. Like I said, not cheap, not cheap for these things. And if you look at what the asking prices online are, again, this cover here that I'm showing you is the cheapest one at 22 bucks or so. And then uh, B cover is like 45 or somebody's even asking a whopping 190 on that B cover. Uh, so keep an eye out for all these covers if you can find them. 
that was part one. Uh, like I said, it ran 12 issues, uh, not 12 issues, 12 parts over a couple of Sonic series. It was like Sonic Boom, Sonic Universe, the regular Sonic title, as well as the Mega Man title were the four that I think each had three parts. Uh, yeah, three parts, uh, three issues in each of them, and then they made out the 12. But the 12th part and the final part is a Mega Man book, and that's Mega Man number 52, the epic finale. You see, you got Super Sonic, you got Mega Man in a gold little out outfit there. You got the Street Fighter guys down below. Again, this is Worlds Unite. All these Capcom characters coming together. Really cool stuff. And multiple covers for this one as well. You can see there, there's a B cover with the lightning bolt down between. And then you got that connecting cover. Again, we're going to get that in a second. That connecting cover over on the right for the C cover. Uh, and these things also do pretty well. Uh, only 15 bucks. Someone snuck one in March for 15 bucks uh, for the actual sale copies. Because that's the only one I could find for sale. Uh that sold, I should say, because when I looked away, look for copies available, there were none available. So this is a tough book to find, even online. So this is the kind of thing, I think, just like that first part where people can start asking like 40, 50 bucks easy if you find it in a box. So go and look. Maybe you can find it in a box. And as I said, this whole epic series is 12 parts, all had a C cover, connecting cover. I don't believe there were variants. Uh, I mean, not variants. They weren't incentives. I think they were just like a C cover, like a, another cover available, which maybe not all shops ordered enough or ordered these, but really cool. This is, again, an example. It's a virgin. 12 parts, all 12 parts would connect to form this mega image of all these Capcom characters all together, as you can see it there. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, it's really cool. I'll try to zoom in a little bit just to give you a little bit of a better look at some of the areas here. You got, you know, the Sonic guys here, some more Sonic characters in the back, Mega Man, other Mega Man down here. Uh, Street Fighter, look, there's Chun-Li, you got like, Proto-Man, you got Ken, more Street, Street Fighter characters, a lot of fun Capcom stuff. I think the Dark Stalkers are probably mixed in back here as well. Uh, but, oh, Amy Rose, what character I talked about, and look, there's a, a Zero. Is that Zero? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, really cool stuff on that mega connecting set. And this thing, I only found one sale. Somebody actually sold a set of these. Somebody had a set of these and sold a set of these. And they got a nice return of 600 bucks on that. And uh, that ain't bad. And there's no other sets like this. That was the only one that came up. Uh, that was on May 8th. So very recent. Again, within the last week or so, 600 bucks. Buy it now. Uh, wasn't too bad uh, on that set. And I think there was one of the books was even slightly damaged if you read the listing. But hey, I mean, where are you going to find that? Where are you going to find this set uh, to make that? So, you know, good luck and God bless if you could find this. Go start hunting it, but it might be pretty costly and pretty tough for you to put one of these together if you start trying. I'll keep my eye out and maybe try to try it myself, but I'm not really going to try hard because, like I said, it's probably going to end up being pretty expensive to complete this set. So, good luck to anyone who might decide to try, though. But if you find a piece here or there, you might be able to help somebody else out and make yourself a couple of bucks, too, if you find it for cheap enough. Now, that all said, we are going to now shift on over to another category. And uh, I think I just got one for this segment section. We're going to do variants. So variant wise, I don't like to try to do like those high incentive ratios or anything like that, because those are going to be tough. Those are things I do more for uh, chasing ghosts for the most part. So don't expect to find those kind of tough uh, high ratio type variants here on Hidden Gems because it's not really hidden. Uh, those are expected to be kind of ex expensive because they are high ratio. So shops had to order a lot. but Here's an oddball one that uh, my buddy Eman Tony had told me about a couple of weeks ago. And I uh, probably should have bought the copy he showed me that was on Macari, but I didn't. Uh, but this, My Little Pony, Friendship is, is Magic, the RI cover. So it's a 1 in 10. This is a J. Scott Campbell cover. Yes, this is Campbell, which if you look at the pony's eyes, you can probably see it a little bit in their faces that it is Campbell. And there's a signature if, uh, if you, you know, didn't believe me. But this is a Campbell incentive variant for My Little Pony, a 1 in 10. So it's a low ratio, could be in a, at a shop somewhere. You might be able to find it. And this thing, again, does all right. Uh, recently sold copy, uh, got a steal at 7 bucks. Somebody got a steal for 7 bucks on April 10th. Uh, at least my opinion, that's a steal. Because if you want to look at what this thing actually is asking for, asking prices are more in that $80 to $100 range. You can see steel at seven bucks for a one in 10. Keep an eye out for it. You never know what you might find, even online. You know, keep an eye out for it. Maybe you stumble across it. Uh, this Campbell number three, 
My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, 1 in 10 Retailer Incentive. It's going to just say RI on the cover uh, for a retailer incentive. So that's how you'll know uh, that it's an incentive. All right. So like I said, that's the only variant I got for you this week. We're now going to shift on over to some nostalgia picks. Uh, in the same kind of vein of, of the My Little Pony, we're going to look at some of my nostalgia picks because this is other stuff that I love digging for. This is stuff I'm always on the lookout for because it brings me back to when I was younger. So I'm looking at stuff from the 80s and 90s because that's when I grew up. And uh, the first one being, and I don't want to leave the ladies out, so we're going to follow up on our My Little Pony. Guys, you can look for these too, but Rainbow Bright. Don't sleep on Rainbow Bright. This book does all right. DC comic, Rainbow Bright. It was a one shot, the official adaptation of the Rainbow Bright movie, you know, the animated movie. This does okay. So if you could find this for cheap, go and get it because 20 to 50 bucks are recent sales, both May, uh, within the last couple of weeks. You can see this is what it's actually selling for. And then the asking price is 35, 50, 70 dollars for Rainbow Bright. So don't go laughing off. Oh, it's Rainbow Bright. What do I want that nonsense for? This is why you want that nonsense. It can make you some money if you can find it for cheap enough. So go look in those kids' boxes. Go look in those weird sections. I don't know where you're going to find it. And that's why these things can be found. Because who knows? It's not going to be, there's not going to be a Rainbow Bright section in the regular boxes. It's not, you're not going to be going through like, oh, Punisher, uh, Quasar, oh, Rainbow Bright. It's just not going to happen. There's not going to be a card made for Rainbow Bright usually at a shop. So you might have to find it in a weird place or just in the R's. Well, I don't know. It depends on how your, uh, your shop alphabetizes or organizes. But uh, just keep an eye out for it. Like I said, don't ignore it just because it's a little girly comic and you think it's beneath you. This thing does all right. So keep an eye out for it. And I got one more in that kind of same vein of uh, the Rainbow Brights and the My Little Ponies sticking with the 80s Care Bears. And this one is a collector's nightmare because those people who collect the, the uh, Marvel border, the anniversary borders, this is a tough one. I mean, between this one, I think the Heathcliff's a tough one. But this Care Bear one could be really, really tough. I found one once for 50 cents in a, a box. It was beat to hell. It was really, like, crunched up. It looked like somebody sat on it and crumpled it up. But 50 cents, I still bought it. And I still was able to get, like, 30 bucks for it uh, in the condition that it was. So, you know, this was years ago. This is years ago. I probably should have kept on, to, kept a hold of it because that was the only one I've ever found. I've not found one since. Uh, and when we see the prices on this thing, you'll see why. I probably should have held on to it, even if it was all beat to hell. Because $140, $135. Granted, those are nice looking copies, decent looking copies, very fine plus. $135, $140 raw for this Care Bears number seven. I'm sorry, I didn't get the number. Care Bears number seven. Uh, again, it's the Marvel anniversary border. Craziness, craziness where these prices have gone. If you want to see the asking prices, you thought those were crazy. Check this out. Uh, there's one that's an auction, probably going to end uh, on Monday. So while this, while this is dropping, uh, $81 at the time when I took the snapshot. So I don't know where it is yet, but that one's well on its way to getting up to those $140 you know, prices. But $300 raw, $1,800 for a 9.8. $1,800 for a 9.8. So don't ignore the kids' books, the little girl books, because these things could still be worth your time and worth your effort. So go digging for it. Go looking for it. Uh, go hunting for it, because in case... Again, I know a lot of you already know about the Care Bears book, the, the very savvy collectors, all you, you know, old, you know, old veterans. You already know this book. This isn't news to you, but maybe the prices are news to you. Like you didn't know where it was priced at these days. And for you newer collectors, this is something that, again, keep an eye out for. Just don't ignore it just because it's a Care Bears book, because it can make you some money if you find it. Or you can just add it to your collection because this could be really tough. This is going to be a tough, tough book as the years go on. And, uh, Hopefully you like that. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And hopefully you like the idea of me breaking it down into categories. It makes it easier for me to put together. So I'm going to try to keep doing it. So regardless of if you like it or not, I'm going to keep doing it for now. So unless you hate it, tell me if you hate it, uh, I'm going to keep doing it because uh, it makes a lot more sense for me to uh, do different categories. And that categories might not always be the same week to week as I'm not going to have uh, an entry for each one of these. I also have other uh, category types that we didn't get to this week, like first appearances and uh, some oddities and some weird stuff. I got other categories. It'll depend on what we're going to talk about each week. So for this week, this is what I got for you. Next week, it'll be something different. Hopefully you like that. And hopefully you enjoy this series as well as everything else. 
thanks for stopping by and checking this out. I'm still having fun, as I said, doing all this stuff. So hopefully you guys are still having fun watching this content and uh, like these oddball books that I'm throwing out at you. And uh, yeah, like I said, let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Keep telling your friends. We keep growing the channel. Check out the giveaway details on the, on the channel, uh, Renovision. And uh, yeah, I'll be back soon with some more content, including Chasing Ghosts tomorrow and then the Tax Show Live on Wednesday. And uh, yeah, with that, I'll see you guys later.